Today we're going to be looking at how to texture a character in Blender. Check out the free sample pack in the description below to follow along with my materials. This video is part of a character creation series where we go through the modeling, the texturing, the rigging, and the animation of the character. However, I know not everybody will want to do every video in this series, so what I've done is I've provided a free project file in the description below where you can download and start from any point. So with that being said, let's get started. Super excited to announce that my new asset pack is available both on Blender Market and Gumroad. At launch, it's on sale, so the quicker you buy it, the cheaper it is. There's also a sample pack if you'd like to check out a portion of it before committing. So if you'd like to learn more, check it out in the description below. So if you've downloaded the sample pack, you should be able to follow along with this tutorial as we're primarily gonna be using materials there. So you can go ahead and copy that into your asset browser folder. Then if you come up here and select crafty assets, how I've labeled it, you'll be able to access those materials here in this menu. First up, we're gonna begin UV unwrapping this character. So we're gonna drag our image editor up over here so that we can see the direction of our material. And we're gonna go ahead and drag a cardboard material onto this character here. And having this image editor open, we'll be able to see the direction of the fiber. So we're gonna work on UV unwrapping this character and making sure everything's going the direction that we want. So you can just go ahead and drag and drop that cardboard material onto your character. And then we're gonna tab into edit mode here and we're gonna do smart UV unwrap. And what we're gonna do is adjust this myelin origin just a tiny bit and set the area weight to something like one. And that's just gonna give us a bit more even distribution, which considering he's boxy is what we want. Great, now what we're going to do is fix the direction on these. So here's a little trick you can do. Go ahead and grab a face of everything that is facing the wrong direction. So we're just gonna go ahead and grab a face on each kind of island set that is facing the wrong direction. And see over here on the left with our UV map that it is starting to highlight those islands that we've selected. Now we can go over each one of those islands and press L. And what that will do is select the entire island. That'll make it kind of just a quick way to select everything that's facing the wrong direction. And then what we can do is we can come up here to the top, select our individual origins, and then we can hit R90, and that'll rotate all those 90 degrees, making sure that they all face the direction we want at once. This is the quickest way I've found to do that. So next up, I'm gonna go ahead and bump up the scale on the cardboard texture. And this is a bit larger than life, but that's because I really want that to kind of be visible when people are looking at it on Instagram and kind of mobile screens. So having a little bit larger than life textures can be kind of a stylistic choice. Now what we wanna do is introduce some contrast into our character. So let's go ahead, tab into edit mode here, press L. And we're going to assign a new material slot into some portions of our character. We're just gonna go ahead and drag a leather fabric material in there just to give ourselves some kind of color contrast as well. And let's adjust this color a bit. I'm gonna push mine a tiny bit more towards the reds and brighten it a bit. Let's work on adding some displacement to our characters. We're gonna need some additional divisions. So we're gonna go ahead and add a subdivision modifier. Now under the render properties, if you have the experimental features set, you can go ahead and see this adaptive subdivision here. And when we click that, what that's going to do is provide us with a dynamic subdivision to kind of match our material. And to take advantage of that, you need to come to your material settings here and make sure that the displacement and bump is turned on. Next up, let's add a tiny bit of character. So we're gonna go ahead and choose this kind of paintbrush. And we're just gonna put it on the body first here so that we can get a preview of what it looks like. And we're gonna use this to kind of paint some lettering onto our character. So I'm just gonna go ahead and adjust the scale a bit and the color there. I think I'm gonna use red because I think that'll pop off the box nicely, but still kind of keeping that warm color tone. We'll change that back to cardboard. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a mask and paint that in. So I'm just gonna sign the bottom right of the character and kind of add my name on it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here in the shader menu. We're gonna go ahead and add a mix shader here because we're gonna mix that paint shader in here so that we can paint over the top of our cardboard. Then now what we can do is we can hit Shift A and search. And because that material is grouped, we can just search for paintbrush and that'll appear here and we can plug the UV in there as well. And next up, what we're going to do is begin kind of painting in where we want our paint to appear. First, I'm just gonna go ahead and select a kind of red color here in the grouping. And then we're gonna move over to our 3D view here and switch to kind of texture paint mode. 
Now, when we switch to texture paint mode, we're gonna come up here to the top and we're gonna make sure that we're selecting a material here at the top and we have cardboard selected. And we're gonna click this little plus button and add a new base color image. And you can just leave that at 1024 by 1024. I'm gonna call mine name. And when we hit OK, it's going to create an image inside of our shader over here to the left. And we can move that and plug that into the mix shader to work as a factor. And with that, we'll be ready to begin painting on our layer. So I'm gonna just move in here and I just have white selected and about 25 pixels on my brush. And I'm just gonna type in my name there. And you can go ahead and write whatever you want on here. You can go around the whole box and really decorate it if you want. Maybe a little kid kind of drawing over the whole thing with crayon could be cool. But I'm just gonna do this now to keep it simple. And when you're done doing this, make sure that you go ahead and save your image because Blender will not save it automatically and you will lose it and have to redo it later. So what we're gonna do is plug the UV in up here and then we're gonna plug this into the factor of our mix shader. And now when we switch over to rendered view, you can see it looks like we've kind of written on our cardboard box with paint. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and mix the normals and the displacement maps and get really complicated with it, but it's such a small amount, I don't think it's really noticeable. So I'm just gonna go ahead and play the color here until I get something that I'm happy with. I'm gonna desaturate that red just a tiny bit and we're ready to move on. Now we're going to do something similar. We're going to tab into the cardboard setup here and we're gonna go ahead and add another mix node, but this time we're gonna add a mix RGB. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use one of the grunge materials from the pack, which is also included for free. And what we're going to do is then paint over our character and kind of paint in some dirt and grime to make this feel a little bit more realistic. So we're just gonna go ahead, create a mix RGB node here, and then we're going to search for an image and we're going to kind of pick a grunge to plug in there. So I've already included one for free and you can choose that one. And we'll just go ahead, pick that here in our image node. And then we're going to plug that into the bottom socket of our mix RGB and we can switch that blending mode to multiply and set the factor to 100. And we're going to move over to our window here, go back to texture paint mode. And we're basically going to go ahead and do this same exact process. We're going to make sure that we have a material selected up here and then we're going to go ahead and put that plus sign base color. This time I'm going to set mine to a 4K texture, so 4096 by 4096. And I'm just going to go ahead and name that dirt so I know what it is. And the reason I'm doing a higher resolution is because they're going to be spread across the entire body of the character and would be noticeable if it's low resolution. And what we can do is go ahead and pull that image texture over here, which we've named dirt, and we can just plug that into the factor. And then at this point, we're ready to begin painting in the dirt on our character. Now what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to go ahead and set a larger radius for my brush and I'm also going to set the strength down which will kind of adjust the opacity a bit and that's because I don't want to paint in just pure dark grunge over the whole thing. What this allow me to do is kind of just take sweeping brush strokes over the character. But first we're going to turn on this face selection match up here and then what you can do is you can tab into edit mode and select portions of your character and it'll only display those portions and will only paint on those portions and that'll just prevent us from painting over the character now because we're painting in the cardboard here it won't appear on the leather but the leather already has a damaged look so i think it's kind of fine as is if you're not familiar with that face selection process, let me kind of show you how to do that here in a second. So we're just gonna finish up the hand here. We're gonna tap back on an object mode. We're gonna grab our object here. And then as long as you have that face selection up there, all you have to do is tab into edit mode and select different pieces and hide the rest. Tab back into texture paint mode and you can continually paint. So now I'm just gonna kind of fast forward through this process of just painting over the entire character as it's kind of tedious. I decided to kind of darken the inside quite a bit to give it a bit more contrast from the outside. And then what I'm really doing is just painting around the edges or wherever objects kind of touch so you can see where the eyes are, the eyebrows are, I put more dirt. There's no wrong or right way to do this, just trying to introduce some character and kind of realism into it. Now as a final step, I went ahead because with the full texture pack you get cardboard edges and sides and I went ahead and just added those around the edges and I did this so that I kind of had some visual contrast with the dark border. You could also just paint over it and make it darker and that would give you kind of the same effect as well if you want to stick with the free pack. But here you can see we have the final result of our texture and character and next we're going to move on to rigging our character and then animating our character. As usual, thank you for watching and tag me in your creations at Southern Shoddy on Instagram and Twitter so that I can see what you've made. If you're interested in supporting the channel or getting some project files, I do have a Patreon and products that I sell. Links in the description below.